Hello everyone, my name is Jana Wolf. And I'm Michael Salomon. And, and this, this is, is the, the Sleeve Chef. Chef. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. You can feel free to um, throw any questions at us all throughout the show. I want to give a big thank you to WMAR2. And um, I want to give an, uh, another big thank you to the Comprehensive Obesity Management Program, for which I am the Director of Nutrition. So feel free to shout out to me as well. And the biggest thank you to our <laughs> guest taste tester, Marika. Why don't you give us a little overview of um, what your journey has been like and some of your non-scale victories? Sure. Um, I just I just want to just give a really quick shout out to Bonnie Stein who set me on this journey even though she didn't mean to many years ago. She's the person that kind of got the wheels rolling for me. Awesome. But, That's fantastic. Um, it is. I had my surgery on New Year's Eve wow. with Dr. Bello. Right. Talk about New Year, New You. <laughs> and since I started my weight loss journey, I've lost about 50 pounds. Wow. About 28 of them since surgery. Awesome. So Congrats. Congrats. doing pretty Fun. good. And That's as amazing. As far as non-scale victories go, I've got to say life is just so much better mm -hmm. right now. There's no back pain. There's That's no great. knee pain. Hugs are better. Love it. All of it. <laughs> <Love> <laughs> Everything it. all together is just so much better for me. So I'm really grateful oh. for the program. Well, That's thank great. you We're so, so happy much for, you. for being thank here. You. That's amazing. Thank you. And um, you can feel free to also do questions for us sure. um, throughout the show. Yep. All right. We'll all have right. you back up during the taste testing. Thanks. All right, so I am so excited because we have a huge storm coming, and I truly believe that chili and even wings are one of the best meals oh. for a cold, rough day. Absol Don't you think? Absolutely. There's just something fantastic about hanging out with the family, making some chili, a one-pot dish, sitting around, simmering, just building up all that flavor. You oh, get to yeah. eat it afterward. Yeah. You know, just Freeze a very, the rest very classic if you don't want dish. It. You know, and also, guys, this is also sort of very classic March Madness food as well, right? Mm -hmm. We've got some wings. We've got a lot of, like, pub food here, if you will, right? So what we really want to do with this food is be able to make this offering available to you and, and do this in such a way that it's going to be healthy and good for you and, and remove all that guilt. And you can surprise your friends when you make it for them. And be like, hey, guys, mm -hmm. this was in an air fryer. This is better for you than a traditional wing. Right. And all of this is going to be starch-free. Even the chili, we're not going to make it with beans tonight. Yep. We'll go through a laundry list of vegetables that we're throwing Absolutely. in there, which you can definitely sub out, sub in some veggies. Um, and we're doing the wings in an air fryer. So traditionally, if you go to any sort of pub or pizza shop or anything, they're going to be deep frying the wings and maybe even putting some starch on it as a coating. Sure. Yeah, we're not doing that today. So... Um, I, I also want to just mention before we get yeah. started, you know, Marika and I were talking about high fat content in something like the wings, even when they're not fried. So what do you do with that? Well, they're still low carb. They don't have a lot of starch in sure. them. They still go with the bariatric diet right. in a way, but you want to eat them in moderation. Sure. Absolutely. Okay? Yep. Yeah. So let's yeah, get started. Yeah, guys. So we are going to do some delicious. We're going to do some lemon thyme wings. Uh, and then we are also going to do that with a lean ground chili. So it's going to be 93% lean ground beef. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, lean ground refers to refers to the actual uh, uh, percent of muscle to fat that the butcher uses when they grind that meat. So 80% muscle, 20% fat, 93% muscle, 7% fat, which is what we're going to end up using. So that yields higher protein less fat and overall better for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and we're, we're doing it in a way that is like a, a moist cooking method. Exactly. So it's, even though it can be a little bit drier, yep. um, this way it'll be nice and moist. Absolutely, yeah. You'll yeah. still get plenty of richness from that beef without all that extra added fat. So we'll start off by, uh, start off with our wings here. Uh, so we're gonna take our chicken wings, very traditional, very basic chicken wings. Mm -hmm. And we are going to, I love this little technique, pop them into a Ziploc baggie. So easy. This is my favorite, favorite thing. So all we're going to do is just take these wings, pop these guys in here real quick. There we go. This is great because what this allows you to do is you can go ahead and not worry about, worry so much about getting your hands all messed up from those chicken wings, what have you. Easy cleanup, right? Absolutely. Everyone loves that. So and I just want to thank ahead, Christopher, um, Antoinette, Joe, Loretta, um, Michelle, All everyone for coming. Tonight. Thank you. And, and everyone's excited about the air fryer. So that's always good. And Absolutely. Kia, thank you again. And Tina. So All right. we'll put a little salt pepper in here first to start off. We added a little extra virgin olive oil as well. 
Uh, then we're going to go ahead and add in our some of our thyme here. Thyme is really good for you. I uh, love thyme. By the way. This is such a fun, light recipe. And there are oils in that thyme um, that are actually great for your kidneys, your, your heart, and your brain mm -hmm. as well. So this smells great. Any, any time that you can get fresh herbs in oh, anything. Absolutely. And all we're going to do for this time, guys, is just take the top of this time, start at the top, and just pull straight down. Don't worry about necessarily getting all the leaves off. But do take your time. Yes. And, <laughs> and it's all about taking your time with the time, guys. Very important. And as you're doing that, I just want to show the audience and you how I got a new hashtag today. Yeah, look at Our this. Our friend Tova, who got her surgery today, um, she made us, so both Dr. Dovek and I, um, some sweaters. So Nutrition by Jana. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so next up, we're going to roll our citrus, guys. Again, you've seen this technique. The idea here, rolling the lemons, helps break up the membranes inside of that citrus, makes it easier to squeeze. So we're going to cut these lemons in half. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Heather, for thank joining you. us. Oh, and Michelle loves growing herbs in the summer and drying them for all winter. Wonderful. That's actually a great idea because sometimes I don't know what idea. to do with all those leftovers that aren't going to survive during the winter. All right. So we're going to add the juice of three lemons in here next. And what this juice, what this acidity is going to do, guys, from this lemons is it's going to help denature the proteins in this chicken, which will help it cook quicker. All right. Yeah, this is going to be great. Very good. And um, you know how we talked about how uh, the wings can be a little bit higher in fat, calories. It's good to know, as a rule of thumb, one wing is about 100 calories. So if you have that in your mind, you can kind of count them as you go. And I know a lot of people can't eat more than, you know, just a few, but um, just knowing that is, is uh, very helpful. Um, and then, Jane, yes, we will be posting the recipes. We've already posted them, but we can post them again. Absolutely. All right, guys, we've got our wings marinated here. And I'm just going to give a quick zip up here. This is my favorite part. It's a quick zip up here. This allows us to get nice marinade all over these wings without worrying about spilling anything anywhere, right? This is the best part about this. So we've got our little marinade here. We're going to add a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. Oh, that smells so good. And if you're dealing with any high blood pressure, a little bit of chili powder, um, or even. Uh, bordering on high blood pressure and you want to limit the salt um, if you throw in all of these things it's going to be you know flavorful enough where you don't even need to add salt or Absol you can do yeah. like a mrs dash Ab if you wanted to absolutely that's a great point Jana. Yeah. you could very easily if you want a salt substitute you can very easily do a mrs dash or a lighter salt option mm -hmm. and thank you christy and robin for coming in um, and thank you, Chris, for the cool camera angle. Oh, yeah. Compliment. Oh, yeah. Question. And we have a question. So, Chef, how far ahead could we pre prepare those wings and let them sit in that marinade? That is a fantastic question, Marika. So, in terms of marinating these wings, I would do these anywhere from three to four hours ahead of time. Uh, you don't want to go anywhere beyond six, just because you might worry a bit about breakdown, what have you. But just do them three, four hours ahead of time. Let them marinate in the fridge. Pull them out. Pop them, you know, pull them out of the uh, marinade then pop them right into the air fryer. So we'll go ahead and okay. pop those guys into the air fryer. All right, so we are using, um, we're using a Chef Man air fryer. I've never used one of these before, um, but I, I have a different one at home. Um, so all you do is you take your marinated wings, open it up, it's pretty easy. And it's very easy to clean too, which is really nice. Absolutely. Um, throw them in. And now we've already um, partially cooked ours, so I'm going to do it for a little less time. How much time would you do this when you're uh, at home? So I would say after they've been marinating as well. So again, marinate for about three to four hours ahead of time if you want. You can also do a half an hour to an hour. I would say an hour or longer is where you're really going to hit that optimal point. Uh, but then you can, because that allows that, again, allows that acid from the lemon juice to help denature those proteins, which will help the wings cook faster. Uh, so for a traditional wing, they're usually in a deep fat fryer for about 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, but for this air fryer, I would go anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but then also that can vary based on the uh, efficiency of the air fryer as well. So I would also refer to the manufacturer's guide as well, just as a, as a guide. Yeah. And then keep in mind, too, you can always check in on them and just take a quick pop them open. It's like, hey, how are they doing? Are they, do, are they where, where I like them? Okay, are they fully cooked? Okay, great. And then go ahead and pull out from yeah. there. Yeah. And um, you can look at all different 
YouTube videos on this. Mm -hmm. Not that I, you know, I think that we're the sure. best, obviously. Absolutely. But um, you can look at a ton of other YouTube videos on um, different recipes and different methods of cooking the wings yep. in the air fryer. Absolutely. Yeah. And then in terms of uh, that heat, guys, you saw I had a little bit of chili powder to the wings as well. In terms of heat, you could back that off as well if you want. You know, if you're worried about the spiciness, if you're worried about the heat, again, you could very easily back that off and not be, and, and you know, uh, 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 again, it's easy to back, like, uh, back yeah. that spice off. Awesome. All right, guys, so next up, we will start with our lean ground meat here. In. Okay, and someone asked about the air fryer. Um, it's the Chef Man air fryer. And, uh, Chris asked about using pork rinds as um, a substitute for um, breading for really anything um, or for wings. And that's okay, but you're already dealing with a very high fat um, content in the wing itself. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's needed either. You could get a real nice crisp on the air fryer. But, you know, if you want something a little bit more heart healthy, you can use just a tiny bit of cornstarch tiny bit. I know that we say, you know, limit the starches, but if you use just a sprinkle, that's okay. And um, also almond flour, just a little bit of it. Yeah. And Marika. Yeah, Jana, I smelled that marinade before they went in and it was so amazing. Oh yeah. You probably will not need anything else. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Love if it. it's, if the marinade is good enough, you don't need the burning. Yep. I agree. And, and again, like your, to your point, Marika, uh, the idea of too, allowing it to marinate, the longer you can allow it to marinate, the more it's going to soak up that flavor and just the moister and the better the chicken will be. Yeah. And um, so we got a question about what um, what do you set the air fryer on? Yep. Um, so 350 is what we okay. set ours to. Uh, again, that's a very traditional oh, temperature for both. Okay. It's a very traditional temperature of both traditional deep fat frying. Uh, so a word on when you hear the term like pan fry, say you're out at a restaurant and you're reading a menu and you you're curious about, well, oh, how do I know what's what's good to order, what's not good to order, et cetera? Uh, well, an easy way to do that is looking at the cooking technique. So, for example, if you see searing, that's going to have little to no oil. If you right. see pan frying, that's going to have about an inch worth, uh, a quarter inch worth of oil in the pan. If you see deep fat frying, deep fat frying is literally submerging the protein, the battered protein, in, in our case, chicken wings or non-battered protein, in that oil and fully cooking it. So it's going yeah. to absorb all that additional fat. So it's a really important thing to keep in mind. And I, I do get a lot of questions on deep frying. Um, if it's okay, you know, once in a while, here and there, that's everyone's favorite line, once in a while. Right. What is once in a while? I mean, it's, it is, it's maybe every, you know, month or so. Right. That's, in my opinion, that's sure. once in a while. But either way, <laughs> to get off on a tangent, right? Um, the deep fat frying is also not great for your heart health and your overall mm -hmm. general health. Absolutely. So it's not always about weight loss. That's not always the sure. case. So I don't recommend deep frying in general for sure. overall yep, health. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And keep in mind too, guys, is there are other cooking methods like, uh, for example, braising. That's a moist cooking method that'll allow you to cook something for a long period of time, inject a bunch of flavor into it mm -hmm. without that real high fat content that you would get from a traditional deep fat fry. Right. Okay, awesome. So we're just sauteing our gr lean ground beef here. Let's add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And um, just as a comparison with the fat content, lean ground beef, um, the fat is much less, eight grams, oh, yeah. versus the protein, which is 25 grams yep. in a cup of this. Yep. And then if you do the, you know, if you look at the um, regular chicken wings, it's one to one. It's 25 grams of fat, 25 mm -hmm. grams of protein. Mm -hmm. So um, you can see the difference there. I always Absolutely. recommend to try as much as you can to get the protein higher than the fat. Sure. You know. I'm gonna sneak by real quick here. Yeah, right sure. Here just a bit. There you go. Okay. All right, guys, so you notice I added a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to this pan. Again, keep in mind that we don't want a really dry, dry pan because uh, this is still has has a lower fat content. So again, we're gonna have less fat that's actually gonna seep, that's actually gonna seep out of the beef as we're cooking it. Uh, so I added just a little bit more fat to again prevent burning. That's a really important thing to keep an eye on when you're cooking. Okay, and we have a really special guest that just popped on. Hello, Dr. Dovek. Dr. Dovek. Hi, Dr. Dovek. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. And Dr. Dovek got her own sweatshirt as well. Again, hashtag nice, nutrition nice. by Jana. 
Very nice. Yes. So what are we chopping up here? We All are right. using we're using vegetables instead yes. of the beans. We are using a bunch of great veggies instead of a mm -hmm. traditional bean here. And beans beans are for bulking. Okay, so you don't need the beans in the chili. I always tell people if beans are the worst starch that you're eating, that's fine. But um, if you're eating lots of other starches, you can take those out plus the beans. Mm -hmm. um, and we're bulking this up with some fresh vegetables, non-starchy veggies such as zucchini, um, squash, carrots. All of these things have lots of health properties, high fiber, low carbs, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and slice up our onions. So a little culinary 101 for you. With our knife, we want to hold our knife like a tennis racket. Mm -hmm. We're going to take our fingertips and tuck them in, and you want the side of the blade to go up against the knuckle as a guide. Very, very important. A lot of people will tend to cut like this with your fingertips facing out. That's how you cut yourself. You want to go slow and steady. Keep your fingertips tucked in. We like our fingertips. And then just very carefully go allow your knife to do the work here. Don't force it. You're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than you are with a sharp knife. Very, very important. And um, with Dr. Dovek popping on, I just want to mention that um, her and Dr. Bello have been participating in what we call Comp Fit Fet. And this for the whole month, they've been participating in the actual bariatric diet. So we put together a month long um, meal plan that is low starch, low carb, high protein, and they've been doing it almost 100%. So what they're doing is essentially piloting what we're going to give you guys in March. So exciting. Yeah, and it's essentially it's just a big you know, meal plan and some ideas for going out to eat and for some pre-cooked meals and um, even canned goods, etc. So you're going to have a wealth of information when we come March um, and hopefully we keep adding to it, you know, as we go on. So it'll be almost like a living document. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and Dr. Dovek's been getting great results. So I'm excited about oh, it. Yeah. Very excited. All right, guys. So we've, um, got our beef, we've got our beef slowly sauteing here. Again, you want to go over a medium heat. Really, really critical. We just don't want to burn the beef. It's going to take a little bit of time. That's okay. You got mm -hmm. plenty of time. You remember, good food ain't fast. Fast food, fast food ain't good. Yeah. Oh, I like that. All right? Let's do that one. There you go. Okay. Um, All right. And I guess while we're while we're waiting for this, yeah. um, we can make a little plug that we are having um, the Be More Healthy Expo, Be More Health Expo. Yeah. Um, and where where is that at? That is at the Baltimore Convention Center. Uh, we will be there March 16th. Yes. Uh, we will be on the What's Cooking stage. Jana and myself will be on the What's Cooking stage, doing a live live presentation. So excited. Yes. So excited, like really excited uh, <laughs> for this. Uh, so it's going to be Saturday, March 16th, 1.15 p.m. Mm -hmm. is when we will be going live on stage. We would love to see all of you there. Please come. Please tell your friends. Love a huge GBMC turnout from the comp crew. Yeah, so we're, we're excited about that. And um, it is the first time that we're doing this live in front of a bigger audience, uh, which so is exciting. exciting. Um, but we'll have a lot more details to come as we get into March. Yep. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this ground beef out. You'll notice that it's par cooked. Uh, we can continue the cooking process as we go back into the pan and as the chili lets yeah. simmers more. Yeah, so it's, a, it's still a little bit red, so which is fine. Still, it's a little bit of redness, but again, that's perfectly fine. I'm using a slotted spoon when I'm pulling out of the pan because I want to reserve that fat that I spent all that time rendering from the beef to actually cook my onions and bell peppers, and my onions rather, zucchini and everything else in. Okay, and um, we just have a question about this. Um, it, it, this is a Dutch oven, correct? Correct, yeah, okay. so it's a, a basic crock pot, uh, cast iron, because uh, cast iron is the way to go. It, it's just retains heat better, it cooks more evenly, lasts Very longer. Good. It's a little bit more expensive, but you make up for it in the long run. Yeah, and it takes some upkeep too. Oh, definitely takes some upkeep for yes. sure. Um, Be good <clears> to your cast iron. And Amy, thanks for coming, hello. And you guys, if you have any questions, even if it doesn't have to do with what we're cooking, um, even if it's just nutritional questions or cooking, um, general cooking questions, uh, feel free to ask us. I like this as a meal prep idea. Uh -huh. um, oh, absolutely. Any, anything that's like soup related, chili related, etc. it's so easy to just get a bunch of little bowls of Tupperware, throw half of it into your freezer and half of it for the week. 
All right, guys. We'll set yeah, this so up we to have the a side question. It. So, Chef, could you do this recipe in a crock pot? Absolutely. As well? You okay. could. Ab thank you. That's a great question, Marika. You could absolutely do this in a crock pot. Uh, keep in mind that it's going to cook a bit differently in terms of sautéing. So, what I would recommend is starting it off in a a full pot, and then when you're ready to start simmering it, then go into your <coughs> crock pot, set it to that proper temperature and then allow it to just slowly simmer right. uh, in that crock pot. Mm, and that's and be wonderful. delicious. Let me check the temperature real quick over here. Great. All right, so we're going to again slide our onions in here next. All right. All right. And it's nice because um, you're, you're not adding, you are getting a little bit of fat from the meat, but you're not adding that exactly. much oil. And exactly. it's, you don't need to. So you're saving on that as well. But you're getting all of that flavor that came out mm -hmm. of the meat, which is wonderful. Yes, and you, you can are. absolutely use ground turkey, ground chicken. You can oh, even yeah. use a pulled chicken. It doesn't really matter. It's really up to you what you want to use. Absolutely. It might vary the recipe a little, like slightly, but that doesn't, it doesn't really matter because you can find a ton of those online, right? Yeah, or exactly. you can, or you can ask our and, good old chef and. right here. Exactly. <laughs> all right, guys, we've got our onion sauteing here. We've got our carrots sliced up. Let me <coughs> grab one real quick. Show you quick what we did here. So we've got our carrots. You'll notice I'm actually not going to peel these. I'm going to wash these ahead of time. Get these guys ready to go. Uh, so just start at the end here and just do a quick. Again, you want uniformity in your cooking. Uh, so specifically when you're slicing especially. So if you're slicing. Uh, so here, for example, we've got our onions that are sliced. You want the same thing here with our carrots, right? So again, no different. And it's good to not remove any of the skin from most of your vegetables, um, such as the carrots or yep. even the zucchini and the summer squash, because that's where a lot of the nutrition is retained. Not that the meat doesn't have yeah. it. Yep, and but this is what really what we're looking for here, guys, is a nice, nice, almost like a quarter inch, you know, eighth to a quarter inch thin, because as you cook everything, uniformity allows it to cook evenly. That way you don't have vegetables that, are, that aren't tender as you go to eat them, et cetera. And if you have a whole bag of carrots, you might as well cut up the whole thing and Absolutely. save the rest of it for a salad. Plus it looks prettier. And it, yes, of course. And um, we got a great question from Diana. Are we allowed to eat ground venison? Absolutely, Ooh, it's very lean. Yum. Um, it's usually local, which is even better. Love ground venison. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're going with our carrots and our celery next. And again, so we're gonna saute our onions here uh, for about a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, again, saute is a, just a culinary term, little to no color on it. So again, that's over a medium heat. Uh, we're using the fat that we had from our pan, much the same idea of like rendering bacon, for example, or rendering turkey bacon, traditional bacon, and using that fat and cooking in that fat, right? So it's like Jana was saying, yeah. we're not adding an addi any additional fat to the dish. And then um, we have a crock pot question. Sure. Um, do you have to cook the meat ahead of time like we did here, or do you allow the crock pot to cook it for you? Oh, great question. Uh, so when you say the meat, are you referring to is like a, like a bigger uh, cut, like a chuck or something like that? Uh, and then, uh, so to answer your question, uh, really what the crock pot's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to continue to cook it. Uh, but for ground beef, for example, it's just that crock pot's gonna cook it slowly and allow it to simmer. So all those flavors are gonna really meld nicely together. Uh, so again, that's again cooking for an hour, hour and a half, etc. cetera. Uh, but if you're cooking more of like a chuck, uh, like some people like to use chuck, some people like to use flank, uh, traditional bigger muscle, mm -hmm. uh, you wanna go ahead and use that. Uh, and then again, cook that over that, that, that uh, so you're basically, in that point, you're basically braising it. Uh, again, which will allow it to, you wanna dice it up. You don't wanna put the entire thing in unless you wanna like uh, allow it to almost like uh, uh, Fork it, allowed to be almost like fork tender, like a pulled pork would be. Um, but in that particular application, I recommend doing basically cutting up into larger chunks, searing it off, and then browning it off rather, and then much of what you saw here, mm -hmm. and then just going back into the crock pot and stewing it and allowing it to get nice and moist and nice and tender. Okay, so if it's ground, you can put it into um, the crock pot with everything. Absolutely. Let it cook there. If yep. it's a chuck and you have pieces, then you um, sear it first and then you throw it in afterwards. Yep, exactly. Okay, good. Gonna add our zucchinis in here next, guys. So we got a little yellow squash, a little, uh, green, a little yellow squash and zucchini here. Okay, and... Um, Again, the skin of these um, squash have two to ten times the amount of the nutrients. Oh, yeah. 
than the actual meat of the um, of the zucchini. So, good. so you can see here, guys, we've got some nice, really nice looking translucency here. This looks beautiful. Great color here as well. You can see the onions are transparent. The celery is transparent. The carrots are starting to cook. So again, this is when they talk about, when you hear the term building flavors, this is exactly what they're referring to. We add our, we start with our, we render our beef all first. We add our onions in next, start layering those flavors up. Add our carrots, add our celery behind that. Then add our zucchini in and just slowly build those flavors up. Always remember to do a little bit of seasoning as you go. So we're doing the salt, pepper. Yep, this what is a little salt and pepper here? to start off with here. Uh, and then after we, once this starts cooking, I'll add in our tomatoes next. Okay, great. And I am so excited because the air fryer went off already. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at those later. Pop this garlic in. Okay. And thank you again to everyone that's popping in and asking questions. Um, feel free to ask us whatever you'd like. Um, we're doing a ground chili um, without the beans, and we're bulking it up with nice non-starchy veggies. We also did mm -hmm. a lemon thyme wing. Um, so you could do your traditional type of wings, but we're doing them in the air fryer, so it's significantly less fat. Absolutely. Plus, we also, so we're going to add our, uh, our garlic next, guys. Mm -hmm. And we've got our diced tomatoes, canned diced tomatoes. Just find a good canned diced tomato. Uh, go, go right in with that. All right. And then we're going to add my favorite tomato paste, tomato paste, Marika. Did we need to drain those tomatoes before you added them or just That's a great, the whole great thing. question. Yeah. Uh, you, want to, you want that juice that's in there. That's why I recommend buying a, a higher quality. Yeah. So instead of the 99 cent one that you might be able to find that's the store brand, spend $1.99 on your canned tomatoes and put that juice in there. Because mm -hmm. that juice is, again, is just gonna, that tomato sauce is just going to add to that flavor, that yeah. chili. All right. So next up will be our tomato paste. Again, this is just going to add some nice richness to our chili here as well. And these things will add some carbohydrates to the meal, and that's okay. We're adding, we're also adding a ton of fiber and a ton of protein, um, and all of this stuff is non-starchy. Mm-hmm. Okay. This guy can mix. All right, and thank you, Stella and Robin, for popping in. And yes, Chris, this is like the healthy version of the. Food Network. I know, right? I love it. <laughs> I think that's a big compliment. That is fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, guys, so see, see how beautiful this looks? Look at this. Look how, Lots look how of colors. great all the color. It's fresh. It's so simple to make. Mm, yum, yum, yum. All right, so we've got our tomato paste in here. Again, we're just going to saute this together for about a minute or so. Add a little bit of salt. Keep in mind, you're going to reduce this a little bit. So you want to really be very mindful about how much salt you're adding. Because as it reduces down, it's only going to concentrate that flavor. So taste, mm -hmm. taste, 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 taste. Be really mindful about your salt application. All right. All right, And guys. Um, just for some other applications of chili, um, you know, you can always do like lettuce wraps if you want to. Um, make it more into like a taco. You can also do uh, Quest protein chips. So the Quest protein chips now have tortilla style, which actually feels like a Dorito, but they're mm. low in carbs, high in protein. Oh, nice. So um, you can get the tortilla style in the cheddar cheese or the ranch, That's and they're great. awesome. Yum. That so you can actually fantastic. make, um, you, you know, you can dip the chips in them too. Absolutely. All right, guys, so we've got our lean ground beef going back into our pan here. Again, you want to use a traditional pot. This is a one pot dish. Very, very important thing to note there. You got a nice one pot here look at that beautiful color that's Yum. gorgeous all right so we're going to go in next we're going to go in with our cumin so you could also do this by actually marinating the ground beef in these spices you could do it either way whichever you prefer add our chili powder next and these all have really nice health properties Dried as oregano well. in here and then finally cayenne pepper now a couple notes on the heat right you noticed we didn't add any Habaneros, we didn't add any jalapenos, we didn't add any traditional hot peppers to this dish. What I love about this chili is that you can really, you can, you can back off on the heat if you're worried about how the spice is gonna impact your, your pouch or your sleeve. Uh, then you can also ramp up the heat if, you, if you're having friends over and you're cooking for them or if your, your stomach feels okay on that spice. So it's just really important to gauge Mm -hmm. what level of spice you're comfortable with. Yeah, 
And, you know, we recommend not bringing in spicy foods for about one to three months. Yep. Um, usually people can't handle it at the one month mark. Oh, yeah. So the longer you wait, the better. Um, and if you do have any acid reflux or um, just any pain from that, you can always pop a papaya mm -hmm. enzyme. Oh, papaya yeah. enzymes are very helpful with breaking down the food and digesting it more quickly. So. Absolutely. All right, guys, we've got our chili cooking away here. You might say, hey, chef, I don't see a lot of moisture in there. I'm worried about it could be a little bit dry. Add just a little half a cup of water to this. We'll allow it to just, again, a half a cup, and you can just allow that to slowly stew. We'll cook it uh, for about an hour or so, to simmer it. So we'll bring it up to a boil. Once we add a little bit of liquid, a little bit of water to it, bring it up to a boil, drop it down into a simmer, and just allow it to cook for about an hour. Okay. And um, breaking news, we got uh, chili lime flavor for the tortilla style from Quest as well. Oh, nice. So there's new flavors out there. Breaking news, guys. Breaking Coming to news. you live. <laughs> I like it. All right. Thank you, Christy, for that. All right. All right, guys. And we got a little, uh, little movie magic. So let's go ahead and check on those wings. All right. Shall we plate them? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, those look great. Janet, to the camera. Take a look. Look at this, guys. These look fantastic. They look like they came out of a traditional air fryer. Yes. So, are we going to just... Yes, let's go I ahead just and grab these guys here. Perfect. You're going to have to help me here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> with these. Oh, okay. These so good. So you can either dip them into like a traditional, I would recommend low fat um, blue cheese or ranch. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a blue cheese person. I'm from New York. And... Um, or you, or you could do a different type of dressing if you want to, since they're um, lemon thyme. I'm from Maryland, so it'll be Old Bay. Oh, yeah. You know, or a little malt vinegar, depending on what you're eating. Yeah, I see a smile. <laughs> All right, so look at these guys. Look at these beautiful. Look how beautiful these are. These look fantastic. Yay. They look like they're traditional fried, right? Plus, in case you didn't notice in that air fryer, it's sitting on top. So all that extra fat is actually going underneath into a drip pan, basically. Beautiful, these are great. All right, so our chili is simmering away nicely here. Okay, and um, we just got a question actually about fluids. Um, so Chris, you recently got um, a ga like one gallon jugs and filling, up, filling them up with water. Any recommendations or flavoring for better tasting? Well, I always recommend throwing in just fresh fruit yep. um, and a little bit of Splenda or Stevia if you like. If not, um, I mean, any sort of Crystal Light, True Lemon, True Lime, or any of the true products. Um, you can even take anything that, you know, like um, a ocean spray, mm -hmm. sugar-free juice and put them into ice cubes and throw them in there as well. So there's so much out there. There's Mio's um, drops. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tons. So you just have to walk down the fluid aisle, pick up something that looks good to Absolutely. you, and then just try it out. Absolutely. All right, guys. So we got a little uh, batch we started ahead of time here. Okay. So this has been going for just over an hour. You can see how these flavors all beautifully came together here. Wonderful. Yep. Do a nice serving here. Mm, and there's so much stuff that you could put on top of oh, chili, so right? So, so true. Chopped scallions, low-fat cheese. Absolutely. Low-fat sour cream, low-fat Greek yogurt. Anything oh, else? Am I missing looks... anything else? Pickled jalapenos. I was going to say, absolutely. I like mine with a little bit of fresh lime juice. Which oh, is what yeah. We're going to add to ours. Beautiful. So we're going to add just a little bit of fresh lime juice to it. Mm. I love that. I just love that little bit of hit of acidity as it comes through. The richness of that chili. Oh, this looks so good. Yum, okay. yum, yum. All right. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to get the utensils out. Sounds good. Okay. Just a bit. Shall we invite Marika back yes, up? Yes, please come back okay, up. Okay, come on down. All right. We're going to finish this guy. So, guys, we are going to use a little bit of plain Greek yogurt mm, for our perfect. chili. I love it. So, so simple. It's a great little topping, a great nice little alternative to traditional sour cream. We were talking beforehand about what's better. Right. Just non-fat plain Greek yogurt or non-fat sour cream. Is there a huge, huge difference? Not really, but you will get some of the um, probiotics and some of the protein from the mm. non-fat Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. 
I tell you, this smells really good. I can see my eight-year-old diving straight into Oh, I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this I think is a really fun thing for the kids, Kid too. Friendly. <laughs> Kid friendly and a great way for Absolutely. them to get their vegetables. Right, right. And if they right. don't if they don't want to even see their veggies, you can puree some of those yeah, up. Yeah, that's true. And then throw them in. Hide them in there. Yeah. That is a great <laughs> point, Jenna. I yeah. uh, some dietitians might disagree with me, but I'm okay with hiding vegetables in foods. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of our lime juice here, guys. Oh, this looks so good. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. That acid from that lime juice is just gonna wake this dish up. It's gonna be so good. Let's go ahead and slide the wings over here first. Yes. And um, we're getting a question about if they're yeah. um, close to like a lemon pepper wing. Uh, yeah, yep. So you've got that same lemon flavor. You mm -hmm. could certainly do like a dry, almost like a dry rub on the wing. Uh, if you want to do that traditional lemon and then add some of that lemon pepper seasoning behind right. it, you could very easily do that mm -hmm. in the same marinade application. Yeah. All what right. if you wanted to put that marinade on a different cut of chicken? Sure. Would that yeah, still work the same way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. You could do it on chicken legs. You could do it on chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you prefer, really. Because that, 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 again, it's just... It's going to be a, it's a very classic combination for chicken mm. and turkey if you want to do turkey as well Great. for sure okay so are you a drumstick are we doing a wing or are we or doing a flat you're a flat, flat. flat. All right. oh. <laughs> i'll take this little tiny one right here Go for okay it. guess Thanks, what yeah. i am drumstick yes of course <laughs> <laughs> i will say that these are just so perfectly browned thank you and they're very crispy on the yes right. All good right, let's eat mm. Mm. oh that's so good perfect mm. Perfect. No breading is needed on this. Mm -mm. Right? None whatsoever. So light, so flavorful. I agree with you. Mm. I'm being rude and talking with my mouth full of and this is so good. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, it smelled amazing, but mm. it tastes better mm -hmm. than I imagined that it would yes, taste. Yes, and so. thank you. Have bones? Okay, I'm going to... I'll finish that later, <laughs> but... Yes, indeed. Now we're going to try the chili yes, as do well. Yes, chili next. Okay. All right. I love our little crock mm -hmm. bowls. Those are very cute. Okay. Love chili. Here you go. All right, guys, let's try these. All this right. So, so this so is our nice. lean ground chili, guys. We had some really nice, again, lean ground beef, 93% lean, a bunch of high fiber, pe uh, um, high fiber vegetables, as Jenna was saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Mm. This mm. is so good. Perfect. Mm. This is perfect snow day food. Oh yeah. Perfect snow day food. I love it. It's the best. Perfect for the kids, perfect for the family. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's great for mom, for those hardworking moms out there. It's looking for something fun and easy to make. Yeah. So you can just set it and forget it for an hour or so. Yeah. I, and know. the kids can help with this. The kids can definitely mm -hmm. help with this. Okay, I think I need a to-go box. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you guys so much mm. for joining us. Thank you, Marika. Thank you. I loved your comments and your questions. Thank you. That, that was perfect. And Thank you so much for making such a warming, oh. yummy, cozy meal. Absolutely, This is guys. definitely needed with the upcoming snowstorm. Absolutely. This is great snow day food. This is great March Madness food. This is great tailgate food, too. If you just want to have a bunch of friends over and you're going to a Ravens game or, or any other team that's out there. Oh, boy. And, <laughs> or a Bills game for this girl. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> so if you're going to a football game, guys, this is a really fun, healthy alternative to bring with you. Again, uh, we are going to do our um, comp support group uh, the 28th. So next Thursday, next 630. Next Thursday at 630 at Civiletti Center. Did I say it right? Yes. Yes. And he is going to be there cooking up some Your food. Your very own. So come on out. We are going to do some very healthy, fun, bariatric for two cooking. I'm really excited, guys. Uh, and then the wonderful Jenna Wolf will be there as well. Yes. Um, Marika, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. It was, was such a blast. pleasure having you. This was fun. Really enjoyed everything. And again, Jenna and I will be at the Be More Healthy Expo March 16th at 1.15 on a Saturday. Please bring come. Bring the family. Bring the kids. We want to see a huge turnout from our comp family. And again, thank you very much, everybody. Yes, thank you for coming, and thank you for the comp team, marketing, WMAR2, and we will see you yes. next month. See you next month. Have a great night, Bye, everybody. Everyone. Be safe.